Every time President Trump and his campaign file a dumb new lawsuit or spread a new lie about voter fraud, they quickly get batted down, and this will shock you. It's all a giant grift. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Well, President Trump has now entered the flushing his weed while the cops pound on the door stage of his presidency. Everyone who inhabits the world of observable reality from a majority of Americans to world leaders to even some Republican state officials has accepted the Trump lost and Joe Biden as the president-elect of the United States. Even some of Trump's closest friends and allies on the world stage have abandoned him, like British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Not only are they close friends and allies, but they look like estranged half-brothers who came from the same sperm donor. And I'm guessing that sperm donor was Nick Nolte's mugshot? Ah, oh, you guys are both my boys. Well, on Wednesday, even Boris Johnson called Joe Biden the president-elect and tossed in an extra burn on Trump for good measure. One of the many uh, merits of the excellent conversation I had yesterday with uh, President-elect uh, Joe Biden uh, was that we were strongly agreed on the need, to, uh, for the, once again, for the United Kingdom and the United States uh, to, to stand together. Does the Prime Minister now have any advice for his erstwhile best friend, President Trump, whose continuing refusal to accept the result is both embarrassing for him and dangerous for American democracy. Prime Minister. Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, I had uh, and have a good relationship with the previous president. I, I, I do not resile uh, from that. This is the duty of all British prime ministers to have a good relationship uh, with the White House. Wow, not only did he call Joe Biden president elect, he called Trump the previous president. That's such an effortless little English burn. The English can insult you in such a way that you can be in your deathbed 20 years later and think, hey, your best friend said that? My erstwhile best friend. <laughs> well, trust me, he's erstwhile now. But as the old saying goes, if you can't trust a fellow right-wing goon who once got stuck on a zip line and tackled a small boy during a rugby game, then who can you trust? That's how clear and decisive Biden's victory was. Even Trump's closest allies on the world stage have gone out of their way to congratulate Joe Biden and recognize his victory in the election. And they're not alone. Several Republican officials in key swing states, from the Georgia Secretary of State to the Arizona Attorney General to the Philadelphia City Commissioner, have all made clear that there is no widespread fraud and that the results in their states are not going to change. Do you have any indication of major irregularities or fraud in this election? We haven't found any widespread fraud. Our office had received more than 1,000 complaints shortly after the election dealing with bleed-throughs and people using Sharpies. We looked into that. We were able to determine that dot did not affect anyone's vote. They also did a random audit of 2% of the precincts, and it came back 100% that there wasn't any statistical anomalies or errors. I have seen the most fantastical things on social media, making completely ridiculous allegations that have no basis in fact at all. Oh, so you also followed the president on Twitter? I have seen the most fantastical things. Sounds like something Dorothy would say in The Wizard of Oz, and yet he's accurately describing the president's Twitter account. I have seen the most fantastical things. Witches and munchkins and a video of the president tackling Vince McMahon with the CNN logo on his face. And not only are those three Republicans, but even Karl Rove wrote an op-ed declaring that there is no evidence of fraud that could overturn the election. Karl Rove! the guy who engineered the last disastrous Republican presidency to lose the popular vote. When you lose Karl Rove, you need to do some serious lack of a soul searching. This is like Darth Vader saying, guys, why are we trying to rebuild the Death Star? They're just gonna blow it up again. No, Darth, don't talk to yourself that way. I guess I can make a bigger one. <laughs> and if the word of those Republicans isn't enough for you, the New York Times called election officials in every state and found that there is no evidence of fraud. A postal worker who claimed to have witnessed ballot tampering recanted his claims and said they were made up. Even the Trump campaign's lawsuits have mostly been laughed out of court. For example, you might have heard one of their most common complaints that their poll watchers in states like Pennsylvania and Michigan weren't allowed to observe the vote counting. According to Trump, this is responsible for hundreds of thousands of votes that should not be allowed to count. Therefore, I easily win both states. He keeps doing this thing where he thinks he can just call dibs on states the way a stoner calls dibs on the last slice of pepperoni. Devin, there's no pizza left. That's the drawing on the box, Devin. Devin. 
look, Devin, we all love weed, Devin, but you've got to stop. Trump thinks it's official as long as he throws in a hereby or a therefore. That's the same tactic drunk Red Sox fans use when they're getting dragged away by cops. I hereby claim squatters' rights, therefore granted to me by the Commonwealth, allowing me to continue urinating from atop this telephone pole. But the more important thing is it's not true. Trump lawyers have filed a bunch of frivolous lawsuits claiming that because they were barred from observing the count, the states shouldn't be allowed to certify their results, which is insane. Because first of all, the ballot counting was literally shown live on television for everyone to watch. I remember because I was sitting on my couch staring at cable news 24 hours a day, four days straight, like I was in a clockwork orange. I watched so much cable news, I started dressing like Steve Kornacki. When I close my eyes, I can still see Jake Tapper's forehead furrows. Second, Trump lawyers brought this claim before a judge who dismissed it as absurd. Here's how one case went in Pennsylvania before a judge appointed, it should be noted by George W. Bush, judge, are your observers in the counting room? Trump lawyer, there's a non-zero number of people. Judge, are people representing Trump for president in that room? Trump lawyer, yes. Judge, I'm sorry, then what's your problem? It's great that the more Trump uses fancy courtroom words like hereby and therefore, the more judges start talking like they're the ones from Queens. Your Honor, there were a non-zero number of people in the counting room. Well, there's a non-zero chance I'm gonna knock your block off if you don't start giving me straight answers. Non-zero. I believe that case was called Trump v. Get a load of this guy. <laughs> and then there's the repeatedly debunked myth that dead people are voting. This is one of the dumbest voter fraud lies because it almost always turns out that it's an administrative error or a case of mistaken identity. You know, because sometimes multiple people have the same name. An idea that is sure to come as a shock to Donald Trump and his son, who's, uh, what's his name? Oh, it's escaping me. Oh, right, uh, Forrest Stump. Anyway, CNN did an investigation where they sampled 50 names of dead people who had supposedly voted in Michigan. Of those 50, it turns out 37 were indeed dead and had not voted. Five people out of the 50 had voted, and they're all still alive. The remaining eight are also alive but didn't vote. I think my favorite part is the five people who voted and were still alive. It must suck to get mistaken for dead. Rudy Giuliani, of all people, should be able to sympathize. Hey, stop throwing dirt on me. Can't a guy catch a few winks in a shallow ditch anymore? Although my favorite dumb conspiracy theory has to be the existence of a mysterious Biden-Harris van in Nevada where Democrats were supposedly filling out mail ballots. It's a claim that has been repeated multiple times by Trump's legal team and Fox News. The poll worker saw people bringing handfuls of ballots to a Biden-Harris campaign van. Those ballots were then filled out at the van, placed in return envelopes. Mail-in ballots were filled out on the side of a Biden-Harris van. You saw something suspicious. We're going to get right into it tonight happening on the side of a Biden-Harris van in the parking lot of the polling station. A van pulled up at the center, marked Biden-Harris. Wow. The doors of the van were open. Ballots were clearly visible. Ballots were opened with letter openers, and wow. ballots were filled in and resealed in envelopes. Nobody gets a van so they can do crimes outside of it. You do the crimes in the van. That's what vans are for. You're either doing mobile pet grooming or crimes. And if it's for crimes, you don't put your name on the side of it. You never see a van airbrushed molester mobile. <laughs> Although the kids would know. They'd probably think they're gonna have candy. And then yesterday, Trump shared an even dumber conspiracy theory, a video by some random lady of election officials in California picking up mail ballots from a drop box, which is perfectly normal and legal. I thought they collected them all. I just want to document. No, we're still collecting. How much? Wait, but how come they already called the state? Because these are uh, mail in ballots. Are you guys official election guys? Where do you guys take them? Election stuff. That's it. I'm beginning to think a lot of these people genuinely don't know how mail works. I'm sorry, where's that white piece of paper going? And why does it have a little sticker of an American flag on it? And why are you guys wearing shorts in November? Okay. Okay, I'm just asking. And it will not shock you to learn the Trump campaign and Republican Party's attempts to invalidate the results of the election are, in large part, a giant grift with the side effect of lighting our democracy on fire. The Trump campaign has been soliciting donations to pay for legal challenges to supposedly defend the integrity of the election. 
But as Reuters reported, it turns out, in the fine print, that donations under $8,000 go to the president and the Republican National Committee. Like everything else Trump and the GOP do, this is also a scam. The money's just going to them. When Trump finally concedes, he'll probably do it in a Bugatti, wearing diamond-encrusted Cartier sunglasses and the necklace from the Titanic. Thanks for all your donations, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to stop the deep state. If you need me, I'll be vacationing in Fiji. With only a few exceptions, the Republican Party is standing in lockstep behind Trump and perhaps his final grift as president because they know it will fire up his base and they don't care what damage they do to democracy in the process. Even after Trump leaves office, cynical Republicans know Trumpism is the future of their party and they want to maintain a good relationship with the previous president. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. We love you.